the academy. Okay, the academy will be um, having their next meeting. We're going to uh, look at tract legislation, kind of tell them what the legislative committee is doing. And we're going to um, just talk through the remainder of the session, which bills really need um, crossover or didn't or did make it in crossover, that sort of information. We will have our regular March meeting later that afternoon, and we're going to review the legislation that did cross over. So I guess basically we're going to be reviewing the legislation that crossed over in the earlier meeting too, but we'll go into explaining that process a little bit more. And then we will ask in April for the Academy participants to join us at our April 2nd call, which is the second is first Tuesday regular time and have the two come together and do a recap of the legislation and um, you know, kind of get into a rhythm for what we want to do May through November. May through November, we want to continue to host the after hours networking events locally. I think we should target some of our, um, you know, we have hundreds of legislators, but not all of them work in an area or serve on a committee that is about the work that we do. So we may try to do a a little bit more of a targeted approach to some of the after hours networking. They've been very successful in connecting with legislators. We haven't had a single one yet, although the one in Cartersville, Bartow County last week is being rescheduled to the um, spring because the legislators got called back to a special session last week and on redistricting. So they could not attend nor could the judges or CASA, so we rescheduled it. But two of those legislators, actually three from Bartow, did respond and say they would love to talk more about our ideas for um, retention. And in the one in Henry County and in the one in Douglas, we've had legislators attend. So I'm inclined to say that the local events are probably more effective than the legislative reception we used to have at the Capitol. I think the legislators are more inclined to come to something where their local constituents are. So we're gonna continue those. We're still gonna do the tour at the Capitol and we are gonna entertain maybe doing a breakfast for some key legislators, um, not, not invite everyone across the board because we don't get that great of attendance but to pick out some key folks we want to talk with. And then we would also continue the monthly legislative meetings. So any questions on this? I think I greatly confused people meeting before last. Silence is usually golden, so no, no questions, Susan. <laughs> Thank you. I said, no, it's very difficult when nobody says anything. So, <laughs> <laughs> well, no, no I, I appreciate it. And I, I understand sometimes the information I get back is my own, like, I haven't thought it out well enough yet. So, this committee is very helpful in that way. Um, the silence also means to me that maybe it's a little clearer this time, which is what I was going for. Okay. Um, thank you for that, though. Right. I apologize. I was on the road quite a bit uh, during your part, and I'm a bad habit of if I come on mute one time, I'll end up going across the center line. If that makes sense, so I just oh. waited until I got back to the office. But I don't have any questions. I do have some catch up that I've got to do uh, with that. Uh, but uh, I hated I missed the conversation last month with the senator Ossoff and all that. So. Um, but yeah, we there's been a lot of conversations local, locally and regionally and state uh, regarding all of that. So uh, yeah. very, very pleased with our rebuttal. Yes. And I don't know what you're hearing, but regardless of party affiliation from people that I've talked with, um, both both 
both of party affiliations feel like it seems to be somewhat politically motivated. That doesn't take away the sting, but. No, but it, uh, whether, uh, I think the first hearing, and again, I, obviously I feel like I'm rehashing something I've already talked about, but the first hearing, I don't know. I didn't know Osak at all. Uh, um, I don't, I really don't dive into too much of the politics more than what I need to, uh, just because I've got enough on my plate. Um, so the first hearing, I thought, well, you know, maybe he's just misinformed, you know, and so that was kind of the av- the, the direction that I went. Um, but then we got to the second one, and I'm like, hmm, my, all my instincts are going off, and I mean, any of if if we have a, it's kind of like if you're a prosecution, you're going to present evidence to of whatever your case is, and you know the, the concern that we had obviously when we had the judges on there was you had a judge that was uh, in our North District that was on that panel, and uh, that judge had also met with the the local county director the week prior to get fishing for information and didn't even inform the the county director or the regional director or the district director that they were what they were willing to be doing. It wasn't until that day that they learned all that. Um, And so I think you you can share something. Somebody on this call can hear what you said and and, and can interpret it in in a lot of different ways, unfortunately. And so, um, but yeah, I, I think our, our response has been good. I think there have been some times in the past that I've been very, we have chosen not to respond. Right. And to me, no response is a response. So I, I really love the rebuttal. Um, I was able to share that with the county directors. I've had a lot of feedback from county directors that were really pleased with that. Um, even had a couple of calls from some local uh, officials, uh, representatives for the Senate for Georgia and uh, our state senator up here asking inquiring about it. So I, I, thought, hot, hot I thought it was brilliant from a communications perspective and a strategy perspective. I just, I was very impressed and feel like that level of support is something that isn't, doesn't always exist. Um, you, you, sometimes you have leadership that aren't, they aren't comfortable with that you know, to step out in that way. But um, I was impressed. Well, and I think sometimes if you're so, cl- in my experience, Susan, those at the very top don't get into the political arguments because of what's riding on that politics. I don't right. feel like Candace gives a flip, you know, as yeah. far as that piece of it. Um, so I think in the past we haven't done that. And just to have... I think whatever number he used, like that we've had like, I don't know, 19,000 missing kids or something like that. I mean, it was not that, whatever number it was, I'm like, there's no way that, that, that that's right. just, no, you know, and, but again, any county director on here, anybody, any of us can pull some data and share it in a public forum. And if it is not carefully explained, you can infer a lot of things out of that data. Um, so, I mean, to this day, we get reports and like, I want to know who pulled the data. When was it pulled? What did you pull for? You know, because it, it our system, the way it's set up, it could pull a lot of different numbers. So um, anyway, as far as you're, you're asking about, I don't mind continuing to read uh, proposals um, that for legislation. I don't mind doing that. And uh, if y'all are doing a visit at the Capitol, I wouldn't mind doing that either. Okay, well, we will be doing a visit. Um, it's just a matter of Carol and Carol Christopher Parrish actually will be able to do the um, tour. And we may do a couple that day, just in case, just so we have a couple of time slots. And and we're, we're talking about whether, I don't think a, a breakfast where we just open the door and we we have Chick-fil-A or, or even lunch, although lunch is tricky for you all because it is during work hours and so that's why the reception worked so well because it was after work but the reception was not there was not enough juice for that squeeze i mean it was pretty expensive and we had two or three legislators stop by 
And already we've been able to engage in these local events with five. So the local events right now are yielding better numbers. But I just need to think about whether it's worth the expense to do a breakfast and maybe only invite 10 or so legislators, a very small audience, all of them who serve on a committee that's related to family and children or human services. Um, I'm leaning more in that direction. I just think we'll have better attendance if it's a small audience. Y'all have any thoughts about that? G GSRA, which is the Retirees Association, that's what they did. And they had a pretty good turnout. They just targeted a very small number of legislators who had the most influence over what their priorities are. Hey, so this is Jennifer. Um, I'm sorry if y'all can hear my wind chimes. I'm actually sitting on my back porch. Um, I think that that is good, limiting the number, just as long as like there's representation from all over the state um, and not just like a specific area. Um, I think sometimes, um, you know, it just, it tends to focus on one area. Um, and so I do think it's important that the whole state has representation um, be invited. Um, and then I will also say that like Danny, I was not very familiar with Mr. Ossoff and his, um, anything about him until everything started happening. And so I did some research and, and read some stuff as well. And I've been reading the, the stuff that's been coming out and I'm pleased with, I mean, I, I am glad that there was a response because I know a lot of times um, as defects workers, you know, no, you know, no comment. <laughs> we all know, and right. Um, sometimes, yeah, no response is a really, really big response. And yes, and data can be manipulated to to get whatever result you're looking for. So I do definitely think that um, they manipulated some of their their data to get their um, points across. Um, so I am glad that someone was able to go back and articulate the other side of that i guess it goes back to that your parents teaching you there are always two sides to every story um, or three <laughs> what, right yeah. yeah what is it there's yeah. their version our version and the truth or whatever it is well i think we were trying to figure out it, I, I don't remember the exact number but let's say it was nine thousand missing kids or something like that that we had lost i think you know it, it's possible if we're running you know 1,300 kids in foster care or 13,000 kids in foster care for the state of Georgia, it's quite possible that a high percentage of that population have been runaways at some point during their, but that that doesn't dispute that they could have left, you know, three hours ago when they've been picked up, but they were reported missing. Exactly. And so, yes. So, exactly. so, they're, they're, so and, and some of our kids are frequent flyers if you, if you right. so I mean you could have a kid that's had three or four different runaways just in a short span of time and technically they may fall into that number so it looks but the way it was advertised is, is we've lost kids and we don't know where they are right. you know um for us in region one we've had uh just this week was the 11th constituent through consistent services from Senator Ossoff's office because of the publicity he's getting. So we have stakeholders that are now going through his office to get information. So uh, I can't tell you how many we have in Metro, but I have noticed because I, I get copied on those emails as well for Metro. And so I will say we get a lot more constituent emails or constituent complaint emails um, from his office. I've noticed probably in the last six weeks as well mm. so oh wow i hadn't thought about it driving yeah. up the number of yeah of course of course so so you know i i know it doesn't need to be said and i know i don't have to say it you know um but whenever the opportunity um the great work that we do with this agency um is not always recognized um to some you know it's always like you said there's three sides of the story but also other people's perception right you know i often talk about how as 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 um, social workers we can make people cry we can make people smile and to some we can be 
very intimidating. However, the work that we do, um, we don't get told enough. And so um, just for a second, I'd like to say thank you for the work that we do, because I know I've been in and Danny, I laugh when you talk about the kid running away. You know, when we used to be in the office every day. I'd one, sometimes it would hide in my office and I'd be like, listen, you got to get back where you're supposed to be, right? Because they're going to be looking for you. And then there were other times that, you know, he would leave out of my office and he really would go run away. He told me a couple of times, I'm going to run. And I was like, what's well, raining outside? I'm not going to chase you now. <laughs> so, you know, those things happen and, and those type of things. But, you know, to the work that we do, we may not get those thank yous. We may not always get them. But um, I, I, regardless of what pu the public's perception is always um, is of us, I think that we do a great job with what we have been in tasked and trusted to do. Um, and I think that every day we come here um, from every level of um, staff all the way up to the leadership to give a best job to protect, right? To uphold the mission. And that's to protect the vulnerable um, children and, and, and adults of Georgia. So good job for what we do. Um, even though sometimes we get beat up for what we do. I just didn't want to take miss that opportunity to say that. So, um, cause I, I know some of you very personally and I know the, the time that you put in, I've seen it. Um, and um, on both sides of the house. And, you know, this is me talking from OFI, right? But we also are always on the news. We don't, we don't ever get anybody that benefits enough. And we don't have this and we don't have that. And, you know, with every effort that we try to do to increase anything that we can to make it better, you know, it's just never enough. So thank you. This is just an opportunity to say thank you for what you do. Thank you for that. I really appreciate that. You taking the time and noticing because it's so true. You know, I'm so firmly, um, so firmly grounded in the, don't be talking about my people, you know, that I, of course, I, it just doesn't, it doesn't occur to me to tell people you're great because, uh, you know, it's kind of like your family, like these people are my people. So don't, don't be messing with my people. And we do need to pause and just you know, I, since I retired, especially I've had the opportunity to do some project work for different organizations. I can just tell you for about four other state organizations, no one works like DFACS. No one works from the, you know, I heard it said you should always serve from your excess. And I said, well, at DFACS, you're asked to serve from your marrow. You know, you just keep going until you're way past the excess. You're down to bone of this. I have this to give and I'm going to just keep giving. And um, I, I will say from, from a little bit of a distance that I have now that I'm not internally connected. I do feel like the perception of defects is better. I know we don't get it perfect. I think two things contribute to that. One is I think some other state agencies are taking some blows that were always given to defects and no one defended defects. They weren't their fault. So I think some of the, the, Hey, this is screwed up because it deals with problems of humans is not the fault of defects. This is screwed up. And, and every agency that tries to fix it, it's difficult. So I think some of it is shared. And I also think some of the, you know, the response to the Ossoff hearings, it was laid out in a way that you could point to it and say, well, okay, this categorically, this says this, but this is the truth. And even though that number may be there, that is a percentage of the overall number. And I can't remember if it was less or if it was in line of the general population of percentage of kids who are runaways or missing. And so to add that context, to take the time and to make sure that remains a priority, I think it, I think it's making a difference, you know, for whoever's looking. There are always bottom feeders that only want the negative stuff, for sure. Um, but in the overall context, so, um, yeah, appreciate that. Also, you know, I saw a response from, from Tom Rollins, who really tried to explain it as well. I mean, there were several people who came out and they didn't have to say anything, but they did. Like, this is this is not balanced. Um, so that is also a step in the right direction. I don't recall anyone doing that when I was in the communications office. So. Yeah, I think defects has always been the, the favorite punching bag, if you will, of everyone. 
Um, and so hopefully that perception is changing. Um, perhaps they realize that um, we we aren't actually responsible for all the evil in the world. Um, <laughs> and Nor can we uh, undo it? <laughs> yeah. And I know personally, I mean, I don't know everyone personally on this call, but I do know several of you personally. And so I feel like I can generalize this. We have all done things that people will never we we've done things we know things that we wish we didn't know we you know we have to go to sleep at night with those things and people will never have any real idea of our jobs and and what they entail yeah i i would i would agree with that yes all right let me check my chat make sure i'm not missing something here right quick oh yes I had seen Danny's, but Susan Cooper, well, well said. So this is where we are. We are, um, we are paying close attention to the, if you have the time, go back and look at some of the archives on the link I gave you to the um, Georgia legislators website. Um under the special committees, under the Senate, and listen to some of that. You can skip through some of it. Some of it is information that you know, and again, is just trying to kind of lay the groundwork. But I think that's the committee to watch. Um, I don't know that a whole lot is going to happen that impacts our work from the Ossoff hearings. I think that we'll really get, and I think it'll come in the form of support, you know, one one nice thing about negative publicity is you usually get something from it. Um, but I do think that the biggest things we'll see the impact the session are going to be these recommendations from the other committee. Of course, there'll be all kinds of other wild things that happen because that's just the way it works. But um, I, I'm paying attention to that um, right now, most of all. All right, that is what I have have today any questions i'll send out the cleaned up version sometime in the next few days and um i really hope whatever you celebrate during these next few weeks that you have some time to spend with people you care about and you get a moment to take a breath Thank you, Susan. All right. Ms. Cooper, you want to share anything? I just want to say Merry Christmas, everybody, and I hope they have a wonderful holiday. And thank you for all the work you do, Susan. Thank y'all. That's my it's honor. I just so grateful to be on the other side trying to work toward a solution then, or at least something to help you know, it's, that's a good place to be. So thank y'all. Y'all take care. I'll see you on January, uh, January the 9th, three o'clock. All right. Thank you. Bye y'all. Bye y'all.